Hey everybody, I am Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and this is a step-by-step paint-at-home art lesson. I'm going to be showing you how you can create this awesome still life with tomatoes and a white pitcher. This is a really great core kind of painting class, very traditional. We're going to be working on values. Uh, white is always a very fun subject to paint in a value structure because really you're just dealing with white and shadows and reflected light tomatoes are always a joy to paint and so maybe you were like oh i like painting with her but tomatoes really i think i'm actually going to surprise you with how not only informative this is but what a beautiful painting this type of still life actually makes and it will look more modern and yet kind of like classical at the same time it's a lot of fun on the mic is my husband john hello he helps me do this because otherwise it would just be me sort of like holding some paint and painting a canvas and holding some paint and painting a canvas. But his cameras, a bunch of them, and they zoom in and he reads the live chat. So if you have questions, you can ask that. We break these lessons down into steps. The steps are then time stamped into the video so you can find your place again later or know what we were working on at what particular time segment of the video. Uh, later, these steps are written up into guides, written out guides with each level of instruction, brushes, materials, all of that step-by-step -step through that you can print out for free. And then hopefully the plan is that eventually a book will come out with all the information. Wish me luck on that. There's a plan. <laughs> There's a plan. There is a plan. A cunning, a cunning plan with turnips. A cunning <laughs> plan. Turnips are my turnips favorite. Turnips and publishing. Turnips and I, publishing. I, I should have painted turnips. They're actually really fun to paint. Turnips are fun to paint. Any turnip it's plan turnip. has me involved. All turnip plans have John involved. All turnip plans. All turnip plans. Yep. So, yeah, we are we are one of the longer-running step-by-step painting shows, but I would say we're probably one of the more innovative. We're always changing. We're always improving. We talk a lot to our community. Um, when there's resources that you need, we try to provide them. When there's information you need, that we try to provide them. This year, we have a core set of colors. If you check the description below, you'll see it. We're trying to develop a core set of brushes. And so we are really working every day. I'm just doing everything I can every day to make the best beginner art education that I can. And I couldn't do it without you guys, actually. So I really appreciate everybody's time. To show up to these live streams, to give feedback, to share in group, to share online. Even my little small Twitter family. I love seeing everything you guys do. It's really, I would be sad if Twitter got big. I would, because I couldn't see all the fun stuff going on. Hmm. Plus, I have a weird Twitter space that's somehow very happy. I don't, I don't, I don't know why. It's like a pocket dimension inside Twitter. <laughs> it's the good Twitter. The good where Twitter. only good tweets happen. And all the blue birds say happy, happy things. I'm in a weird mood today. I've been painting all day. I like your mood. My mood habits. You will notice that we have a printed out lined drawing called a traceable. I'm going to demonstrate this today because I've been getting a lot of questions about how to use this. Often this is written up in the previous mini books and we'll always have something about it um, somewhere on the website. But I just wanted to demo it today as the request and talk about it a bit. You want to print out the reference um, eight by eight uh, on your printer. Everybody's printer is a little different. Um, so when you download it that you want to set that and then you cut out, I give you guys a black square now so you can cut these out. The serial paper I recommend comes in yellow and you want to have it be the dull side up, shiny side down. Hmm. You can use all serial paper for a very long time. So it's not as big of an expense as it might seem. I think it's like $8 for the roll, but a roll lasts a really long time. Like, I could technically use this piece through a whole drawing. I'm not going to. Because I'm Sarah wealthy. <laughs> I have so much Sarah paper right now. Hmm. I got anxious. I don't know why I thought there was going to be a shortage during COVID on Sarah paper, but at some point I did. So that happened. Breathe in, breathe out. Step one. <gasps> do you want to? Yeah. Let me do that. Ah, still life. As we like to be literal, that's why I let you guys name my artwork around here. Very original. <laughs> Very original. 
So step one is getting a lined uh, kind of guideline drawing on the canvas. These are the contour, contour lines, the outside structure lines of the objects, of our subjects, and we want to get these on the canvas. So there's a lot of ways you could freehand it, you could project it, you could use a handy dandy app if you wanted. Right now I'm going to tape down the serial paper. I tape down my transfer paper and I may trim it just for my, so I don't have trouble. Again, you can use this for other things. My daughter has about 50 uses for all of this, so I never feel bad now. I have to have her teach a class. I'm going to also tape it down at the bottom. This is so it doesn't shift. Whenever you're doing a transfer method, it's shifting that will mess you up. Mm. So you want to stabilize the paper and the image that you're transferring. So I will put that here, and I will also tape that down. Because there isn't a horizon line, back of the table line, any really major perspective line in the back, all I've got to do is generally line it up and make the picture base be flat. That's what I have to pay attention to. And I'm just explaining this stuff because I don't want to assume, right, just assume that you guys know something. I'm going to bring this a little more up to the top. And I'm going to line this a little more at the bottom, if you guys see. Because that's that I want to have room for that wood to show. There's a little bit of a forward lip of wood, and it's nice, and we're going to have it show. I can, however, put it in with my T-square, so it's not the line I'm most concerned about. Now I'm going to take a colored pencil. This is overkill on that. You don't need to use a cron de osh. In fact, you shouldn't. Don't tell them I did. <laughs> I am going to trace over all the major structural lines. And this is going to take a minute, so if there are any hellos or questions or anything like that, I will... Ooh, I broke that What, tip what is serial paper? Serial paper is an art paper for transferring images like this onto other surfaces. There are papers like this that are for quilting, for art. This particular one is an art one. I like the yellow and the blue. Graphite paper doesn't always transfer on acrylic well. Some brands do. I think Martha's uh, graphite paper is about the friendliest I've run into for acrylic, and that's because of the plastic nature of acrylic. It doesn't always let you transfer mid-painting. And sometimes you would want to. Mm. I don't have to be perfect with these lines. I don't even have, have to get every single detail line. Like some of this I could probably do um, freehand. I might let myself know that there's a stem, some places that could be going, but I'm probably going to freehand that stem in. If you're not comfortable with freehanding an art, you may want every single line. Now, you also have a free color sheet, don't you? Color sheet. The traceable and color sheet for mixing? I don't know what the mixing color sheet is. Uh, where, so, jo uh, Joni says, where is the traceable and freebie color sheet from the color mixing show located? Oh, okay. So, we're still writing the mini book for the color mixing show up. It was a really big project. I just... We're just getting pictures of every mix and making sure that they correlate to the color mixes and the chapters that you see in the video. That's a few days from being released. The traceables are under the traceable tab on the website. You can keyword search it. Um, so you could just say tomato still life or still life and it will pull up. It's also on the video page, which is in the description and the mods will have that link. Um, I just dropped the step-by-step -step mini book for the pier sunset that we did the dreamy sunset gorgeous it's gorgeous so if you're in the file section looking for any of those mini books and if you're gonna if you're gonna find it on our website it will be under file they're all under the files free to download all right now i've got a good question from brooke i love it and thank you for that question about the color sheet because we're working on that very quickly what constitutes a still life? Well, that's an interesting question. In traditional classical terms, um, a still life was generally an arrangement of objects that you might find around the home and you would place them in a pleasing kind of manner. Um, it's anything that isn't in motion, things that are not alive. So keys could be a still life, 
a pile of tomatoes could be a still life. A vase of flowers could be a still life. Um, as modern art moved forward, you know, the kinds of things that we put in still life actually changes. And in uh, modern still life, you should be putting your cell phone, your, your, the objects that you use, your key fob, like those little elements should be sneaking in. You could be doing like a Dutch classical, which is, you know, when you think of like a full meal in some like dead birds on the table, if you've seen those with yeah, fish so and all that. I heard the rumor was that it that artists used to throw down with each other by putting things in the still life that would deteriorate over time, like fresh fish. Yeah. Well, that means you can paint fast enough. You're either wealthy enough to have the fish and you can paint fast enough to capture it. <laughs> also, here's why artists do still lifes, though. There's an important thing to understand about artists doing still lifes. Still lifes are the most commercially successful subject in painting. In other words, people who buy art are most likely to buy still life. I think it's even ahead of portraiture. Hmm. And so when an artist is trying to make a living, especially commercial, you know, an artist is trying to be commercial, they're going to paint still lifes because that's what, you know, you can hang in your home. Right? A wonderful vase with some beautiful bright tomatoes is lovely in your kitchen. It is. It just is. Let's see how this transfer did, shall we? And we'll take a, oh, it did not do great. What? <laughs> Live Dada. show. It's there. It is there. It's super. What? It's, it's Here's super my word, guys. Light. And I'm, I'm going to do a I can thing. See it. I'm going to, well, they can't can, see it. Yeah, they can. If I can see it, they can see it. It's very light. It's very, very light yellow, but you can barely see I'm it. I'm going there. to add some stronger lines just okay. so you can see some of the help. major objects. Because again, I'm comfortable freehanding it. And on your own painting, the reason I like this yellow so much is that it does this light transfer. That is one of the things I like about it is that it is a light transfer. Um, and it doesn't stain up the paint very much. Especially on something that has a lot of white like this does. But you may find that you want uh, slightly stronger lines. And so what I'm using is a watercolor pencil. And I'm going to use a watercolor pencil because it will vanish fairly well. Why is it? And the watercolor pencil, is, it dissolves in water. Yeah. It doesn't have any oil or grease in it. So it's not going to damage paint. There we go. But sometimes you might do this. You might say, wait, what's going on here? And then, you know, come back and be like, oh, no, I don't want to end up with peaches. I do want tomatoes. <laughs> don't get peaches. So this is me just making sure that you guys have something that you can see. And we will be doing the cloth in such a way as to... bother you guys it's been a long day i can't even tell you how has your day been i know yours i mean theirs <laughs> I'm looking pretty good yeah yeah their day is looking good well everyone's excited to be here oh that is very good this is actually again this is one of those things that's going to come out lovely and I'll just uh, kind of mark this in. I don't need every line there. Again, for me, sometimes I don't need every line. It looks like I brought this a little placed up, maybe a little close to the edge so that the table's going to be coming to here. So that happened. Sometimes you may want to improve structure lines in your traceable anyways. And by the way, that's okay to do. Is that showing up a little more? The reason yeah. I, why am I, why am I bothering to draw these in? I want you to understand if you were just sitting in a class and you just had a pile of tomatoes, when you were beginning to lay it out, the teacher would be like, you know, you've got to sketch this out. This is all they're asking. This is all you would be doing. Um, drawing for art is so different than drawing, right? We would approach this completely differently if we were just drawing it. And uh, I should do that class someday where I'm like, why, how I draw it differently than I would sketch it for painting because it's a completely different process. But all you want in painting 
is major structural lines and spaces. You want to know this is the background, this is where the folded fabric is, this is where my bowl is, my tomatoes are placed, your major objects, just their structural lines. All right? Let's get a nice picture of this and put up step two. So weird deviation, but you saw me deal with light sarah paper. You leave yours light. If you can see it with your eye and not get lost, it's dark enough. You can always come in and darken it if you need to, but if you can see it with your eye, that it's not going to stain up your painting. And less is more in this instance. But for me, a video teacher, you being able to see the lines is kind of critical. So sometimes I have to make a different decision <laughs> about what I'm doing on my canvas for you guys. Step two, sir. Step two, we can do that. So in step two, we are going to do what I have referred to on the channel for a long time as there's nothing there. Oh, it just went the wrong way. Oh. There okay. we go. Now <laughs> we're getting there. <laughs> okay. Um, it, was that on the video or just for me? There you go. It's all there. Okay. So uh, we're going to just be doing what's called blocking in, which is where we do large fields of color and kind of identify each major structure with a color, paint, or value. I'll start putting my paint out. John will take a picture like he is. We'll go over the paint colors, and then we will block in, which will be what we do in this next step, which is pretty easy, actually. Blocking in is a nice way to warm up in art um, because it's going to let you... Uh, watch me not put this cap on correctly. <gasps> If this doesn't go on this time, you all have permission to mock me relentlessly. Look, I got paint all over my hands. Why do I wash my hands? Do nice nails. Let me put out these colors. And we'll go over the colors. And then again, they're in the description. The colors that I'm using for 2021 are in the description. Um, and we will be using them pretty thoroughly through the year. I don't think I'm going to use my tight knit yellow in this particular painting. But I am going to use a lot of cad red and cad yellow. I'm going to use my sky mix that I taught in my 430 colors with my phthalo blue and my ultramarine blue. I definitely am going to pull some black into this. I might use my tiny yellow. We'll see how as we go, right? Well, it, it could happen. We won't rule it out completely, but mostly for the most part, this should be a fairly neutral still life. Like the colors used in it should be kind of neutral, kind of reasonable. And I may put some more yellow there as I need it. But overall, what I expect to use for this live stream, which will be corrected by the end because then we'll know. We won't be wondering, will we? The mystery will be over. Um, is cad red medium, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, phthalo green, burnt sienna, cad yellow, titanium white, mars black. I don't really expect to have to use more. I don't. I might be wrong, but I don't. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is paint in the background. And I'm going to just grab a... I didn't bring my other bucket of brushes over. I'm just going to grab this brush because that's... Well, no, I need a bigger brush. John, I need my other bucket of brushes is what I left it. Mm, All right, okay. I'm going to grab this big bright. This is a number 10 hog brush. This is a Cambridge. I'm just looking for number 10 bright with a stiff filament that I can mix. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, That's not them, but I love it. It's okay. It's okay. I will. I have a thousand brushes I can get through. I can really get through with three. So we're going to let it go. We're going to let it go. I love you because those are going to end up falling off. Okay. Uh, just leave him there. Just leave him there. Let's just. <laughs> He's so helpful and I really appreciate it. I'm overly I'm helpful. taking my phthalo green and my burn sienna. And this is, again, blocking in, which means this isn't the finished resolve painting that I'm looking for. If you're wanting to know exactly what brand this is, this is a Grand Prix by Silver Brush Limited. I will be moving on really soon um, into other brush lines and stuff, but that's what this is. And we're going to paint this around 
I would say one of the tricks will be how to have the stems at all show green on green. Right? That's always one of our big challenges as artists is getting the green on green to work. I'm going around the object and you'll see that I use the edge of my bristles to kind of control my spacing. At this stage, I don't need to be concerned about how pretty the paint is laying down in any way. Because there's going to be so many layers, it's really not that important. I'm going to dip my brush in a little bit of water, not too much, because when you're painting with hog, it can pull, hold a lot more water than a synthetic brush. And so you will want to be aware of that when you're painting. But I know where everything is now, don't I? Mm -hmm. So I'm looking to make sure that everywhere that I have green background, I've got kind of a dark green to work with. Wipe off. And I'll rinse out. Where I can use this brush, I just will. And then if I have to move to a number of cat's tongue or something going through, um, I will switch it up. Okay. So I've got my pitcher, my folded cloth, my bowl, my tomatoes, this blue object, and my wood. So an easy place to paint would be the wood, and I can just take a little black and brown, my burnt sienna and my Mars black, and just paint in some of this. And at this stage, it's not neat and tidy. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things when I used to paint uh, live places, right, um, I would be in this stage of the painting because you start from a blank canvas. And this is the weirdest stage of a painting to let people view because, well, it's kind of ugly in this stage. Mm -hmm. It looks raw, especially in acrylic painting. I'm just kind of pushing this back so I don't forget my lip. So it's important hmm. so I'm looking at object placement making sure that I've got what I need where I need it or around my tomatoes and I'll rinse this out I'm gonna take a little of my ultramarine and phthalo blue This is like a, a really traditional blue that you see in a lot of farmhouse artwork, and so it's a good blue to know how to make. And I'll put in details a little bit later for right now. I'm just trying to get the major object painted in. Hmm. Let's see, just a blue object. Just paint it in, roughing in, underpainting is another term that you will sometimes hear people refer to for this. If you are unsure of your final composition, you may want to leave more of your anchor lines, your structural lines. Hmm. Oh, you know what I am going to put out, though? What are you going to put out? I'm going to treat myself. To one of my very favorite mixes, my dioxazine purple. Ooh, I'm Whenever I'm doing reds, and I really love to do this with cad red, and it's kind of a thing that I, you know, it's kind of a me thing. I like to take diox instead of black or blue to darken my cadmium red. This is dioxazine purple. And you'll see it does a beautiful job of darkening it. But what also happens is later when I go to pull it into the red, it will allow it to be even just redder and oranger. It's a really cool trick. Sounds like it. I like it. It's one of my favorites. Ooh, third painting today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Knocking them down. Knocking them down. 
I'm getting ready for a very large daily painting project for you guys. And that means that I have to do a little more than a daily painting to get ready. <laughs> but that's good for me because that's, that's where I kind of get into what's going on for me. So just putting in these values to know where certain objects are. I might go ahead and um, for some of this space, I may go into a smaller brush. I'll go ahead and get into one of my cat's tongues. You could use a filbert and I'm going to um, make some gray, just gray. Really not that much deeper than that. And I'm, again, for me, I don't have to be that neat and tidy because we're just getting major values worked out. Not even values, just colors. Just blocking the spaces. Just blocking the spaces in to say there's a thing here and a thing here. and Plenty of time in the art journey to paint it um, in a much more particular way. Plenty of time to play with value and highlights. Now coming on the inside of the bowl, I may do a lighter white. I'll come back to the tomato in a second. I might come right here, just along there. Slightly lighter white. Just have to be able to tell what's going on here. So I could come along and just get a slightly darker black than what this is up against. And put it right here just so that I can tell the picture from the bowl. Enough. Just enough to tell the picture from the bowl. It's messy in the beginning. Easy for me to handle because I know it's going to work out. You can look at my other paintings if you're like, oh my gosh, where is this going to go? Look at the other paintings. <laughs> They'll have an other uh, underpainting stage. But for you, the new artist, being here and having it be this messy can be very disheartening. If you don't have somebody to say, oh yeah, that's totally normal. It's awkward growing up. Hmm. <laughs> and sometimes things feel uncomfortable. These are normal growing pains. Yeah. You don't have to feel weird. Much like the green background, I'm not being particularly um, fussy. Look at this. It's just very rough. You went and grabbed a light, so I'm just creating a highlight that kind of goes here. Just to kind of think about the turn on the handle. And then again, we know that there's the folded fabric here. It might be a little bit lighter on the back side. just so I can see where it is. You don't have to. But you can see I'm just doing a slightly lighter thing just so I can see front of the picture, back of the picture. Mm -hmm. you're only, that's all you're saying. You haven't said anything super fun yet. <laughs> Nothing just weird and all the same value and background painting. A little bit of docks, purple, and cad red. Now, I do like that this tomato kind of goes up above the bowl, so I don't imagine I will lose that. 
And remember, I can paint anything back. I just need to know where everything is in relationship to everything else. The adjustments needed to change this piece up, we will do easily as we go. Good time to change out your water. And we're going to call this a step, and I'm going to sip my coffee. Yeah? Yeah. Got a sip? Sip it. I'm going to have you heat it, too. Okay. While John's doing that, I will check the chat and talk to you guys while he's heating my coffee, taking a picture, and getting me fresh water. <laughs> Nothing for him to do. Why don't I do this for myself? It's because if I back up the chair, a whole bunch of lights break. <laughs> we actually tried that earlier today. <laughs> Who else would talk to people? Apparently, I, I was watching the show, so it's like, you don't need to be there. And I'm like, yeah, take me home. Take me home. No, am I enjoying? Not now. Am I enjoying YouTube? No, not that much. Your guys' features have been bugging me lately. <laughs> ah, here we go. All right. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. You're microwaving that. Okay. So in this step, in step three, we're going to begin to resolve the texture and lighting and effect of the background and start pulling through values. In this type of painting, being able to get a dark, a middle, and a light value, a dark gray, a middle gray, and a light gray is really important. In fact, if you can kind of get those for each object, you will get through most of it. Another thing that I'd like to tell you about painting is that more than getting the exact hue, if you get the value of something, how light or dark it is, you will end up with a better painting. That's much more critical than the exact color mix. So, you know, you'll hear me a lot saying the hill I want to die on. The hill you want to die on is grayscale more than color, though I do think getting color mixes is wonderful. Is my phthalo blue semi-opaque or opaque, says Lovely Life. Lovely Life, wonderful online name. They're all transparent. And here's how you know. If you want to know how your tube of paint is, on the back, it'll say tinting. When they say tinting, that's what they mean is how opaque it is. So a high, a high tint or low tinting. And then where's the other one? And you can see on this one, see how they did a paint swatch there? Um, so tinting might be very staining. Uh, light fastness one, somewhere on here, it's going to tell you how transparent. There it is. That little transparent or opaque, right? They're saying it's about half-half. It's kind of transparent. Thalo blue, thalo green, yellow, they all tend to be kind of transparent, so do blues. So there's somewhere on every tube of paint some weird little symbol or indicator that will tell you how light fast it is, what color it is, what real color it is, because it'll tell you pigment. Like this is uh, ultramarine blue, so this is PB29. All ultramarine blue is going to be PB29, even when they call it Windsor blue. Read a tube of paint, and it will get you through. All right. Uh, Amy Over is like, hill I want to die on. All right. <laughs> so in my family, we have this thing. Is this the hill you want to die on? Which means what battle do you want to have? In any, in any situation, right, there are certain strategic areas for which you need to hold that hill. Am I not? I, I think I also yeah, read Sensu's. Okay. I, I also read Sensu's The Art of War when I was a kid. Why? I don't know. He just did. Um, but that concept that there are areas for which the fight is worth it and there are areas for which the fight is not worth it. And in my, I have a belief structure of what is a key to happiness and one of my keys to happiness is you do not have a battle you do not need to have. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have every war. I'm always telling my kids, you don't have to fight every fight. You don't have to have any war. There are, there are things that are super important, right? They're so important it's worth losing friends over. It's worth upsetting people around you. Like maybe this like it's an issue of humanitarian need. That's maybe, that's a hill I would definitely die on. To fight for the rights of people, definitely I will make myself uncomfortable. But um, somebody's right to eat Brussels sprouts, I hate them. I'm not for them, but I'm not going to stop you. That is not my hill, right? <laughs> Have you ever noticed there are some people, though, they want to die on every hill? They're just emotionally exhausting. <laughs> You're just like, you don't got to have every fight. Do you really care if I eat Brussels sprouts? We don't care. Really? It's not in your mouth? That's, that's it. Uh, Robin B says, my outline turned out really light, even though I pressed harder. Yeah, outline can be light, which is why I kind of traced over in the, as long as you can see it, you're okay. If you're having trouble, you're going to want to light it well and just go over it with watercolor pencil or little paint. 
Uh, choose your battles is the much more succinct, non-wordy, non-two-hour way of saying it. Uh, Robin B. suggested that. Choose your battles. Yeah, you're choosing your battle. Not every war is worth fighting. They just aren't. All right. Back to my reference and your lesson, shall we? Yes. All right. Background. Um, and this is really good to talk about. This is a very different hog brush than, say, you know, a Simply Simmons hog. They're all hog, though. Sadly, they're all hog. It's all wild birth. Mm. Um, and what you like about that is the way they hold water. The ends are kind of split or flagged, and they make a nice diffused line. That's why you choose it as a, as a brush. Right? And they come in sizes. This is like the traditional 10 bright. I'll get the 8 because that's what we always have for acrylic April. And I am going to create a brushless guide at some point here because then I'm discontinuing the brushes I use or mine or whatever. Uh, makes it hard on you. I don't really care about the ego situation to me. But I do care about your experience. And I just want you to know that ma- there are many hog brushes. Many. And they're all good. Right? You just want the bristles to stay in and the length out to be good. Let's make a background. This background is a little bit of burnt sienna and phthalo green and some cad yellow, right? When we want to lighten it, we'll go more cad yellow. And when we want to darken it, we will go more phthalo green. And we're going to begin to lightly brush. And the reason I am lightly brushing, and if you'll notice kind of hatching or weaving my strokes, is because I don't want to have a direct line. I may come over and get a little white. Notice this right here mm-hmm. for the light area on the wall. So somewhere, this lovely person who set this still life, and I want to tell you in photo references, and I have looked at no less than bazillion D still life photos from Pixabay, from Paint My Photo, from Shutterstock, from everything. People who do a good still life are rare and few between. If you're on Paint My Photo, there's like one guy, he does like the most amazing still lifes, but like it's very rare to get a good still life. If you want to make it less saturated, you just add a little more brown. And how we just less saturated the green with a little more brown. What's nice about the green in the background over here is that uh, even though this is maybe perhaps a little bit transparent, the green being under it actually creates a depth of color or layer that you might like, you should like. As I go down the wall, I will be more brown and more green because we are further away from the source of light. I'll come back into my tomatoes a little bit and over my bowl. I can put my objects back over my wall. I just want to make sure that I've got a nice depth. Nice deep depth. You want to make about the same deepness of color and then enlighten it as you come up. All right. You can see I'm just being very rough with my brush. That's the other reason I like to have a hog around. I don't like to be this rough with synthetic. Um, Synthetic is harder to reshape. Maybe that's something I've never said on the channel before. Why, Why do I have hogs if synthetic brushes are great? A hog brush, because it's a hair, because it's a bristle, it can be really easily reshaped with traditional brush care processes. A synthetic brush can take a little more work to reshape. So I can be very hard and scumbly and rough with my hog brush and get some great, wonderful, diffused effects. Whereas a synthetic brush, I can damage it and really struggle to get it back to where I want it. Get a little more green. I'm taking this background super serious. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And that's okay to do, guys. That's okay to do. It's okay to take things seriously. Like, I don't know if any of you uh, ever watched The Crown on Netflix, but I got really, because, you know, COVID got sucked into it, like everything on Netflix. I think I've seen everything on Netflix. 
everything, everything. So, of course, I got really sucked into the interview <laughs> of Meghan Markle mm -hmm. and uh, Prince Henry, who is, by the way, if, if, the, if these are your monarchs and this is your royal family, I totally get that your experience uh, or feelings around this could be very different than mine, right? Because my whole relationship to uh, the royal family is, you know, TV shows, it's the crown, you know, broadcast things. Whereas, you know, if you live um, under one of the places where they are your royal family, you know, completely different thing. So I get that. But I am sucked in completely. Just, just so sucked in. I'm like, what will happen next? Well, we'll go on. And and then, of course, hoping that a, a bunch of it will make it into the next season of The Crown. Because hmm. they said they weren't going to go uh, very far into it, like with, with Diana and Charles. Um, but now maybe they will. I'm just hopeful because I'm like, look, more stuff is happening that you could write about and make a show about. I don't think, okay, and this is how into I am. You know how like with, WandaVision, I watched all the shows that break down. I'm just adding more dark value down here, guys. Same thing I'm doing over here. I'm going to do over here with my brown and my yellow and, and my white. So just like on WandaVision, where I took it super serious and I watched all the breakdown shows with all the Easter eggs, I did that with the crown because I wanted to know what was historically accurate <laughs> and what was made up for the show. Is like, it did canon? She, yes, is it canon? Okay, so this is... You are like, these are my rulers, and this is very important, and I get that. I'm like, is it canon? Did she dance? <laughs> Did she dance for Charles? I need to know. So, you know, I'm in a slightly different place. And then, of course, for me, Oprah is everything. Like, for me, Oprah is everything. Um, I'm so glad I was able to grow up with Oprah Winfrey. Um, but what about that green? This green is now a little more yellow. Am I waxing too much on Oprah? Just want to make sure you cover the green. I am. So how I'm lightening the green is I'll go into yellow and a little bit of white down here towards the edge. I'm more into the green and brown, less of the yellow and white to deepen it. And I'm going to keep brushing layers. Notice that I'm kind of glazing and brushing layers. I did. And that's going to help us create this diffused background still life background for the wall so oprah is everything for me <laughs> she's probably like painting with me going okay that's great girl but sh i need tell me to, about that background tell me about that background that's <laughs> probably over right now don't make me call you up and give you a heart attack with my actual voice on the phone don't make me do it because i know you're gonna like totally go crazy you know that's probably a thing that she like has to resist doing <sighs> like you know, I would call you and tell you to act right or fix whatever it is you're fixing, except you would just freak out that I'm calling you to tell you to fix it. I would. Because whoever it is would listen. It doesn't matter how long she's been off the air. And I know I know, Ellen's been there like a lot, like all this time now, but in total respect to Ellen, she's wonderful. But you know, Oprah you just, is my everything. If you just got a call in the middle of the day, from Oprah saying, you're tying your shoe wrong and you need to do it right. I would just change you how just I tie my shoe. I would yeah. just change how I tie my shoe. It would, didn't, wouldn't matter what she told you. I would just change how I tie my shoe. She could say, you're filling your glass of water wrong. I am adding more change. white and it doesn't yellow. doesn't matter. I'm adding more white and yellow. And I'm just taking the time to build this up. Do you guys see how I'm building it up? I'm also, another thing that I'm doing here. Look here. I'm going kind of, the brush is almost perpendicular. Can we see this? Uh, yeah, we can, because you're amazing, John. To the canvas, it's very leaned in. A little more yellow, a little more white. So you can really get in there. And I'm dry brushing and allowing a lot of what's underneath to show through. So we're getting these wonderful, like, aged patina light effects. I'm really starting to just love this background so much. Yeah. Oprah so, did do that. She would like drive around the neighborhood and be like, stop and knock on people's doors and be like, you can't let your kids play in the front yard. It's super dangerous. I would just die. I would never let my kids play in the front yard. No. But I would just be like, Oprah just told me not to let my kids play in the front yard. I wouldn't. I would be some, just 
for a week. Some folks were asking about the art, not Oprah, because you're like, I know who she is. She's got a channel. I'm good. <laughs> were they saying that? Folks were asking. But the the painting seems a little dark, and that's partially because we're oh well. Okay, so if you've just come in and you're like, that painting is a hot mess. Why does this woman have 600,000 subscribers? What on earth is going on? We are at an underpainting stage. So these hot, messy areas, these hot, messy areas will become refined, evaluated elements of the painting. But one of the first layers of a painting, one of the first parts of a painting is that you need to block in. You need to create space to say, pitcher, tomato, tomato, tomato. And in acrylic, we tend to build up from dark layers into lighter layers, whereas in watercolor, we tend to go from lighter layers into dark layers. So if that was, was that the question? Yes. Okay. And I will add to that. Our, our cameras are adjusted to make sure we can see all the fine subtleties between the darker shades during the undercoat, during the underpainting. Mm -hmm. And as we move up in the, in the, in the, in the, into the brighter and brighter colors, you'll see that, uh, it, yeah, it will definitely lift up. I yeah. just rinsed out my brush. And I'm just going to make sure that I've got, you know, these fine little layers. It's a good time to take it out behind your pitcher and things as well. And the reason you would do it now rather than later is um, because then you can paint your pitcher over things and you'll get a nice sense of real evaluated shadow. Evaluated shadow. Shadow, I evaluate you. And I find you wanting, so I continue to paint you. Mm. Look at this wonderful wall come together. One of the great joys in painting is when you get to paint a patina. A patina is that aging and uh, resurfacing effect that happens in some objects as they oxidize through time. And by doing this right here, I'm creating this really vibrant wall. I'm also helping create a sense of dramatic lighting. You need some drama, some drama. I'm taking a little bit of my phthalo blue and my burnt sienna. And I know where my, I know where my scarf is. I know where my handle is because I block them in. So painting over it at this stage isn't going to harm my painting. The other thing about this that you guys might not know, why did I pick this photo of all the white pictures with fruit? Why did I pick this? Because of orange and green being a compliment. The tomatoes and this background being a compliment create dramatic interest, even though the pitcher and the bowl and everything is kind of white. And the blue in that also in there. Right? It's really blue and orange, but you get what I'm saying. Do you do, you do? So we have a lot of Really blue and orange is the compliment. Ugh. Getting through there. Did I hit my did I drink my coffee while it was still heated? Yes. If you don't think this is crazy but what and you're you kind of curious to see how it works out, hit the subscribe button. What if you do think it's crazy? It's okay if you think it's crazy. It's okay. You know what? You've probably been through a lot right this at this seems, moment. So it if seems you're like just you're, like you're, you're I just it. fell into this video and I think you're crazy, it's okay. Is, huh? this, is this a place where you would call a delineation between nope. one part nope. and another? Nope. No, no, nope. don't, don't. I'm just asking general <laughs> questions. Don't ask general questions. They're not allowed. I'm How do you take keep a little the more yellow on the canvas for? I'm so using long. a wet palette. So this is a Masterson Stay Wet palette. I'm using. Um, it's like the 12 by 13. I have the exact one in the description. And the one I have comes with a couple um, sponges. So it's got a sponge and then it's got this special weird paper. Mm. And I have a lid so I can um, rock from one painting session to the next. And it also keeps my paint from getting right out. This is the last layer. You notice this is kind of significantly lighter than what we've done. And I'm coming over just the tooth of the canvas. This can be a little harder if you're painting on paper which is why sometimes you may want to texture your paper if it is not already pre-textured. And you would do that like with a gesso and a knife or some. You can like actually get smooth paper and texture it with mediums. Gesso being a good one. Uh, modeling paste being like a really good one. I'll just show you guys how to do that sometime. But uh, a lot of the papers like I recommend Frederick's canvas pads. It actually is canvas, stretched canvas. Mm -hmm. And so therefore has that.
What are we doing here? We are talking about the light. Now, are you dry brushing there? I am very much dry brushing here. I'm not getting into my water. I'm light pressure. I'm just lightly dusting, 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 dusting the now, surface. And then where I have an area where I'm like, oh, that's a little bit of a directionality. I'll come back with like this yellow into the green. So I go into the green and yellow. I'm going to come back like this and just really make sure that my light is so super diffused. It's just going to be, yeah. So, all right. I feel good about that. That's maybe where we call a step. Question. That's a background, my friends. Hmm. How much paint can a dry brush brush if a dry brush has no water? A dry brush can brush the amount of paint. I, can, I don't know how to do the rhymey part. And I really wanted to pick that up because that was a good, he launched that to me so well, wasn't it? That was like a gift. And I looked at the gift and I went, <laughs> 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 but cute, fun uh, woodchuck. Reference aside, um, you want to go on your dry brush uh, so you can see there's barely any paint. Look at the look at the brush. That is dry. I have some videos that kind of help you troubleshoot this stuff as a new artist. And and again, the magic isn't in the brush, but it certainly doesn't hurt that it's stiff and scummy. Mm. Stiff and scruffy. Never, 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 never throw a brush out. You never know. You never know, but I feel like this has got a nice glow into it. That glow is creating some drama and some basic good still life principles that are happening there. So I think we can call it a step. All right. We did that for a minute, and sometimes it takes a minute, guys. Sometimes it takes a minute. <laughs> the more you know. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Let me see where you guys are at. I'll visit you real quick because I'm there now. Um, I'm going to catch up to the chat because you guys have been going. How do you guys love Robin B is sporting the new uh, emoji, um, the color wheel emoji, and then I have a new sippy sippy emoji for you guys that are in emoji club. Um, so that's, that's what it is. That's the whole thing. <laughs> you can get emojis, but I did draw them, so that's something. Um, all right. So uh, Lula Bell Hall saying her mom is 4.8. Name of carousel, please. Okay, guys, this is the Pioneer Woman carousel from Walmart. It is the most active Susan we know. Yes, most active Susan. Most active Susan, Bill and Ted. Bill and Ted says she's an active Susan, and I shouldn't shouldn't disparage. Shouldn't hassle her. Should not. She's she's a working Susan. Should not. Ah, oh, oh my goodness. Oh, I see. Uh, Little Bell Hall is throwing them up, and then uh, everyone is saying how tall they are. Listen, whatever Linda says, it is not true. She is shorter than all of us. This is not Invader Here. Zim. It is not the tallest. I am the tallest. <laughs> You're the tallest. You're the tallest. Actually, I was while I was watching the interviews of Meghan Markle and Prince Henry, I also watched that thing about Lincoln. Was it that well, dude was tall. Was it Well World with the hindmost? Not Well World, no. What was it with the... It was Invader Zim. No, 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 no. no. There was a book. It was Well World? There's no, it was definitely not Well World. It was definitely not no, 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 Well there was World. There another one that had, that had another character. <laughs> like that I had just a weird almost like nerded that. out anyway, right there. That's right. I was almost like, listen, you. It was <laughs> not Well World. Don't you bring Maver Chang into it. All right. I, I, I. This is gonna, my hex, someone, someone and I will there. not have blasphemy in it. Oh, my gosh. The centaur hex was like everything to me. Somebody's going to remember what I'm talking about and be I like, I wonder how many I people here even read Well World. About. Who read Well World? Did you read Well World? Did you? Like oh. a bazillion of them? Uh, John is uh, six foot four. And I am five foot four. So we're like a foot apart. Yep. But he's shrinking. I'm probably also shrinking. But Linda's shrinking faster than all of us. <laughs> if you were to ask her, she's eight foot three. Gets a scotch taller than I am. Miles taller. Miles. I can get to things in the cupboards much higher. <laughs> much higher. Honey you know, is taller than all of us, but nobody tells her that because shelf. she's already bossy in 16, so we can't tell her how tall she is. In this step. So I like to kind of paint objects, you know, and build them forward. I find I like that layering effect. Is it necessary? No. You could paint all the tomatoes first and then kind of paint around them. It's just what's comfortable to me. 
I'm going to take my number eight uh, cat's tongue here. Yeah. Which is just a pointed filbert. You could use a filbert. You could use round. You could use a bright. You are not stuck with this brush. Unless you want to be. I'm just trying to get them all sold out because we can then move on to the next brush line. <laughs> That's actually true. They should be very worried. Um, so here I am. Oh, I went to the wrong thing. John's like, please don't come what are you the difficulty in our life. I'm going to come right here. There is nothing. You know, I'm just not the girl to mess with. <laughs> I'm not. I never have been. I tell people, and they go, so nice, and they don't believe me. And I'm like, I read Sun Soap Sweater 4 when I was a kid. Did you? I did. I don't know why I did, though. What? I think I don't remember why I did. I had a good reason. I had a good reason at the time that his lip has gone. So I'm making a soft gray. Gray comes in 10 scales, not 50. 10. 10 is all you need. Don't need 50. Don't need to get weird up in here. Mm. Though if you are, I support you. I'm not here to judge. Unless I'm an art judge, then I'm totally here to judge. <laughs> we're going to put a little brown into that mix, and we're going to push this into the background, and we're just going to paint a few little folds of on our fabric, right? Mm -hmm. Pull this down. Get a nice soft covering. In the fabric, I want kind of a different texture and feel than I had in the background of the wall. Definitely want to bring a little bit of fabric forward. And I'm going to fold back here because, you know, like you do. I'll let that dry for a second. I just want a soft gray. And come into my yellow. And I'm going to mist everything because even though I'm in a wet palette, we've been running the fireplace all day. Yeah. And I forgot to put a humidifier back here. It's true. You did. Which is my nice way of saying, John, you got it. <laughs> I'm going to come right here. And I'm on the toe of the brush, and I'm going to just start to paint bowl in. It is a little bit brighter back here. Is it? Yeah, because there's little light going into it. The way they lit the still life allowed the bowl mm. to be bright and cheerful. I'm going to turn my painting some. And that gives me that nice little ellipse inside there. Now, you may have noticed, perhaps you did, that the fold of the fabric is a little bit brown black. And so I can come here very easily. I'm going to put that in. A little bit of a fold of the fabric. This will go better than the peaches, don't worry. <laughs> I had a weird peach painting. It's just, it went pear-shaped on me. Boop, boop. A little bit of a fold there. Mm-hmm. The space between this light fold and that is pretty, it's a very light difference. I don't know. We're really going to see it that much between this two. I'll just add a very light gray. But that's all I'm having to do to kind of get the sense of that there. I don't have to worry about too much right here because I've got stem. I've got stuff. It's just more important that I get value. Yeah. Um, these will really show along on the edge of my brush and these will really show as we get the tomato in and more objects and the bowl itself becomes more painted but until then i'm going to come over here let's say that there's a fold in my fabric that goes this way right and then there's a bit of my fabric coming up mm -hmm. i'm going to curve my brush and it back because that bit of the fabric there is on a roll, which is actually really true. It is on a roll. Hmm. I want to paint the roll. And I want to paint the top of the fold here. Uh, if you're ever trying to get better at your value, 
and it's been a minute since I've done it, but I probably should get back into it. You should do still lives and the still lives you should do is folded stuff, folded towels, kitchen towels, crumpled paper, crumpled aluminum foil, because these things ask you to see lights and darks and the way lines work together to create form. That sounds like a pretty cheap way of doing it too. It really is. I mean, you could spend a lot of money in art school if you want. It's also okay. But you know what they're going to do when you get there? Put a bunch of trash on the table and tell you to paint it. So you might as well just do that at home. <laughs> you can skip that section. They'll not only put a bunch of trash on the table and tell you to paint it, they'll tell you to say thank you for the privilege. It has been arranged in a very special way. Uh, Piled. So excited when we got like bones or something real. I'm like, Someday we'll have to talk about the abuse that art students are suffering right now at the hands mm -hmm. of their instructors. Nobody's speaking up for them. So I'm adding shadows, and I'm just starting to create that sense of form. That's how we're going to paint. Whether you're painting a dress, right, or you're painting a folded napkin, this is what you're doing. It's always this. It's hmm. never something else. Let me get into my brown a little bit because we've noticed that we put browns kind of on the background a bit, right? I'm going to add the brown here. Part of the brown fold. And then a little darker brown kind of on the inside. There's a bit of a curl here. Uh huh. I am taking advantage of the fact that I can paint a little messy on the picture side because I'm going to be bringing a clean line on the picture side down. So that gives me some opportunity to be a little risky. Putting that right here. Take a deep breath, guys. You've got this. It's just incremental. This is nice. All you've got to do as the new painter is really try to look at it and see what's light, what's dark. That's what you've got to do. All you've got to do is be patient with your process mm. and not get too mad at yourself when it takes a second to get there. Me too. It's not particularly different for me either. You don't have any secret skills? I have years of experience, if that's a secret <laughs> skill. <laughs> Time in grade. I have a lot of really bad bad still lives behind me. Many of you coming by are like, is this one of them? Because it feels like this is one of them, but it's not. I promise. It's good. By the time it's done. Everything works out in the end. If it's not working out, it's not the end. Continue to very incrementally add dark values here. Mm -hmm. And you can see that it's starting to be foldy, foldy fabric. It really is. Starting. Fabric seems to be one of those, like, you know, a um, little bit dark more color. advanced topics for artists. It is, but it's a good one to take on if you can. Because I've just added a little bit of black and then I'm going to soften it through here with the brush. And so I'm just trying to define and create a fold. Now what will happen is you will get to a point of diminishing returns, especially with acrylic, where you need to let the paint rest a bit so you can kind of come back and add another layer to build up that density. The wonderful thing about that is that, guess what? There's other stuff that needs your attention right now. Top of this fabric it needs a little bit of extra white white. A little bit. And coming through here, this little bowl, the little bowl, I'm going to actually put a little bit now of my ultramarine into my gray. I put a little ultramarine into my gray. And the reason I chose that is there's a slight blue cast to the gray over here because these things are reflecting up. There's reflected light. 
So when you're doing any painting, you have these things happening, but they're obvious to you in a still life. Uh-huh. I'm going to just make sure I've got the belly of my still life kind of correct. I've got a I want to make sure that my little Vossy bit looks correct. There we go. I'm just looking for that line on the vase. Oh. A little more blue and a little more black. I'm going to also try to come under here and speak to the under curve of the bowl. Under curve of the bowl. Nice. Under curve of the bowl. There's a sort of wonderful patterning here to get into. And actually, I should probably dry that and sketch that in with chalk and then follow that in. So I'm going to dry this. All right. Make sure that uh, between those layers, Thoroughly dry all that stuff up. That's what she's checking. Do do do. I would have thought that she wouldn't have taken that long to dry this, but there she goes. Okay, now I can push the button. So what I'll do is I'll take a chalk pencil. Oh no. And I will make sure that some of my structural lines are considered. And I'm actually going to give myself a nice lip that is consistent, right? So if I'm like this lip, which is the same everywhere, comes down about that far, then my divots in have to be more like this down here to look correct. And we'll want them to face in in this way. They're going to kind of come from each other that way. Sometimes it does you a good service to check this kind of thing. Right? Sometimes it really, really is your friend. Take your chalk pencil and go, where is this object and what do I need to pay attention to? You can always come back. Right? You can. You can always come back. But give yourself a chance by using your chalk tool mm -hmm. to think about what you've got. Now, I will actually get into either a smaller brush, something a little more controlled, um, maybe a, num a number four round, if you'll have something like that. And I will do some more of the detail painting with this and then get back into some of the blending and everything as we go. So we know now that it's going to be like this. Yes, it's a painting. It doesn't have to be an architectural wonder. And remember that it's a painting. It does not need to be an architectural wonder. But there are some things like like when you're painting cars. One of the reasons I'm always so reluctant to paint cars is there's just some things you have to do right or it's just not going to work. Yeah, it's true. And in when you're painting a bowl or anything that has distinctive, you know, for sure structure, you've got to get it. So I'm going to get white. I'm going to be working my ultramarine blue, my black, and my white to create a grayscale representation of what I'm seeing. Like over here, the shadow is more on 
the left side. I'm just wiggling the brush. What do I wiggle the brush? I'm trying to diffuse a line mm. while still painting what I see. Then I can always get into a lighter area, right? Slightly lighter, a little more blue, slightly lighter. You'll be like later, you'll be like, this is my favorite thing I painted in a really long time. Mm -hmm. When you finally unlock still life, you will have one of those moments in your painting. Where you're like, this is one of my favorite pieces that I've done. Still lives, you know, they, they're here to, uh, got something in my eye, help us see. Put a little reflected light right here. And then maybe one more white. There's some very interesting highlight happening over here. And I want to talk to that a bit. And then I can get into this dark color with blue down here on this part of the base. Oh, yeah. If I need to, just like with those little scoopy things, uh -huh. scoopy things being a very technical term, <laughs> don't doubt it, um, I need to just think about how thick something is and that it's, essentially the same thickness everywhere yeah i'm adding a little highlight there and then there'll be like a really intense little reflection right there you will need that and again maybe a little highlight here we're just playing with these values now it is off white up top, but it is still kind of a white. So I've got to find a way to show that this object is white while painting very little of it actually white. Isn't that a fun challenge? When you have to show that something is white, when you're going to paint very little of it functionally and actually white. Mm hmm Kind of dry brush here. Really light up top, like along this little lip. I need to add water to my brush. I will. Just trying to capture, 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 capture. You got this. It's okay to be reflective and still in it. It's okay to be still in your still life. <laughs> That's all right. We don't mind. We know what's going on. It's a still, still life. It is a still, still life. And sometimes your still life will be still. It's a little too bright for that area, so I come back.
Interestingly enough, I do see a little bit of green in that reflection, so I want to show that there. No. I'm going to come in with different little bits of color in my white reflection because white sees a lot. Mm -hmm. White is never white. Unless it's in the snow almost. There's always, a if you've got anything sort of ceramic or reflective or cast light can have an impact, you will be in a minute painting what is going on. Even here, there's just a almost really weird mm -hmm. casting from the tomatoes that we have to th talk about. Okay, I'm adding a little of that tomato. Yeah. A little bit. It's in the gray. We haven't like left it. Wow. Your shape really comes in. Yeah, and I use dry brushing a lot just to soften something, you know, and then I can always come back if there's like where I feel like there's a highlight I've got to, like on this side of the ridge, is there a highlight maybe? Hmm. On this side of the ridge, is there a highlight maybe. Softening using dry brushing. The reason that softening using dry brushing kind of works is that you've got your shading in there, but if you want to soften it, you come through with a little bit of dry brushing and you'll notice that it just diffuses it just a touch. Yeah. That's kind of key there. I'm going to get a little bit of my red and yellow and I will go ahead and let it get into this gray. Just a little bit right there. I like that. All right, let's call out a step because that was a lot, and we need that to keep coffee really and good. keep going as we go, because we're only gonna get to this beautiful still life if we just do the layers. You gotta do if you want to do the crime, you gotta do the time, which I think is generally I'm not sure sociologically is a good statement, but it's a great statement for painting. If you want to do the lime, you gotta do the time. Yeah, maybe I'm gonna let you heat my coffee. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. Why? I don't know. Because now all my paintings are a million hours long. But it really what it is is that I'm trying to teach you guys a lot of skills and techniques. And um, the Joni is bringing up that the, the scoops in the bowl, they resemble an archway. But they do. They're like, you know, that beautiful white ceramic. And there's those little moments in them. And that texture plays against everything else that's happening. Uh, Tammy says, hanging in there, Ducky. Uh, Lullabelle says, the bull looks amazing. Uh, Amy's like, humans are weird. You know, which I have to agree with. All right. <sighs> Crafty Jan says, magic, I swear. Hope that was for me. That might have been for something awesome that you guys do together in the chat. Because honestly, you guys are incredible. Isn't this just wonderful? So what we're going to do now is we're going to come back over here for a minute. What I find in painting, what I do for myself, like right now as I'm gooing a painting, two paintings, three paintings a day, um, is I 
I give myself a mental rest, maybe not a physical rest, maybe because I'm going to another section of the painting. I'm going to miss my paint here for a second. Um, you know, maybe it's not a physical rest per se because I'll go to another end, but I give myself a mental rest where I disengage from something for a minute. I can come back to it super easily. I can come back. I can visit it again. I can look at it again and evaluate later, right? So it's without stopping because sometimes we, we do get up and we walk away, but I like to just kind of like go, I'll go over here now or I'll go over here now if there's spaces in the painting that will let me go back and forth. And there is in this one. And again, I knew I was being tricky when I picked this particular subject because it looks so simple. <laughs> I knew it was going to be like this because this is where, this is where you learn to be a star. No, I know. This is, but this is where you learn how to paint um, value scale with each other. Oh, Karen, thank you for throwing up the, um, Teresa M is going up for the emoji and Jane, Jane is saying good pasta that she's had. And then Amy Obert, you know, I swear cinnamon reads my comments. There are always these random comments that I don't always speak. random. Huh. <laughs> That's so meta in that moment, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm sorry. I have a really good cackle and I tend to fall into it, but it may not represent who I am well. So, meh. Nah. It's well. It's good. Nah. I like it. All right. It. You can kind of see where we're going, right? We've got the shadow. We're going someplace. We're just going to build up, build up, build up, build up. All right. Let's get back into these folds of fabric that are happening over here. And I guess I will have to leave you guys for a second and get back into my reference. When you come back, uh, even with a good, one of the first paints I would upgrade, and upgrade means by like a, a, a higher quality of paint, is your titanium white. Um, because the, when you have better titanium white, you will have more pigment, and that pigment will help you work just a little less hard hmm. to get the results you're going for. You can get into other colors later. Like I think everybody's got kind of a pretty good thalo blue, but not everybody has a good white. And if you want, if you want a good experience, you've got to get into a good white. I'm going to just very lightly. I still want this in shadow, but I want it to be light. So again, we're dry brushing as another way of creating a delineation of value. And then it's also specifically kind of nice on fabric because with fabric, when you do this, It really lets it the texture show through, and then that kind of plays to fabric. And I can always kind of another thing is I can on this white fabric I can go into the ultramarine blue, which gives me a slightly shaded white that will read a little bit shadow, but not be shadow. How we're doing? A little bit shadow. It reads a little shadow. Not Shadow Moon. Mr. Wednesday. I don't know I'm okay with the depiction of Odin. I think I was much more of an Odin fan yeah. <laughs> than I knew. <laughs> like, I didn't know I was, like, fond of Norse gods until I started watching. <laughs> and then I was like, I don't feel like that's an accurate depiction of a Norse god. <laughs> you don't I care. I don't know. I think that uh, Fat Thor was good. Oh, Fat Thor was the best thing ever. All hail Fat Thor. If, if anything, I'm sorry. I know that's a weird thing to say. My daughter and I say that whenever we watch the Avengers. We're like, all hail Fat Thor. <laughs> it's the best Thor. I mean, except for Hephaestus and the Foundry. No, even still. I'm just tapping and kind of, you know, how do we... How do we find, how do we find it? Now, here's a weird thing we can do. Sometimes we can go in and get a little yellow. Watch this. I'm going to do something kind of, what? I know, what? Because sometimes light comes back, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Just did this in some clouds today about that kind of gray light. Where did that light go so gray? I don't know, but I painted it anyway. Pushing that back a little bit. 
into the background. Dry brushing, powerful tool. Look at that. Just keep playing. You'll find it. You will find your moment. You will. And then you will be like, I just got some water, which is not something I've been commonly doing here. Pull this a little bit. Just folding a little fabric, a little white fabric. And come back over with a little bit of this yellow and white. And, uh, see, remember I told you you're just going to look at something for a minute and then you'll see mm -hmm. something else that you want to talk about? Yep, you will. You'll see it and you'll be like, oh, that's what I want. A little bit up into the blue. So it's still in the shade, but it's just lighter. Hmm. It's a lighter shading. That's what you've got to do sometimes. It's still in shade. Notice that it's just light. And you'll see it. You'll know it when you see it. Know it when you see it. A little gray. And then if I get into this, right, there's this sort of like weird, even here, reflection coming up. Mm hmm So, weird reflection for sure. It just happens. Weird reflections happen. I'll take my black here, and I'm going to come underneath this. Mm. I know I'm also going to have that kind of under here, and I might as well put it in now. The dark. The dark. Oh, got things, the shadow in there. Sometimes things have to shadow. You can always come back. And as you've probably figured out, highlight or dry brush or do things, you can. But you'll need to have some sense of what's happening. When you huh. see me do that lighting. They yeah. sort of lined them a little bit. A little bit. We are not going to leave them lined, but we did line them. I guess that's sort of the shadow. It's kind it of wrapped will around. be. I'm going to kind of tap this out. It's a little bit waterier. And then I'm going to bring this here. And I may even come in sort of like, look, flush it with my finger. Oh, that's a, that's some splending skills. That's just a way to get there. You know you need to have it. You know you do. Do I? 
You do. Do I? You do. Okay. I I didn't know I it's needed It's not this. optional. <laughs> Whatever you've got going on, that part's not optional. All right. There we go. All right. There we go. We may you also need to get... Toed. We have tomatoed. We have tomatoed and tomatoed. I'm going to come All under right. my... With my blue mix. Wrong button. There it is. There we go. It has to be under that fabric. Has to be. There's a lot of other stuff, but that's got to be there. In order for it to layer correctly? Yeah. I'm going to be doing a lot of that through here. There's just no way around it. Now, while I'm here, right, this is all having kind of a rest, I'm going to get my dome, my round blender, and I'm going to grab a little bit of my uh, fern sienna. Yeah. And a little bit of my yellow. And sometimes even a little bit of white. Pull a little wood. I oh, know it sounds bad, but we are. I'm going to pull a little bit of wood. That's uh, you know, what you got to do when you're painting. A little bit light pressure. I'm not, I'm not pressing heavy. Are you okay? That's me doing. Are you all right? Because the dog fine. just ran this way. I just dropped stuff. You, did you drop the mic? No. Oh. The mic is very expensive and attached to several cable clamps that keep it from falling. But you're not? That was that was the <sighs> the universal hook tool. All right. Just getting a little bit of that. So wood has a lot of color, a lot of texture. It's orange, it's got yellows in it, it's got browns, it's got blacks. And we want to like kind of play with that a bit. So I'm going to at first I'm going to take my black a little and I'll come here and make some little loops, some wood grain that I'm going to begin to speak to. Uh huh. Go up and loop in, and it does not have to be perfect at the stage. We are starting out. Is the beginning. Lots to do. Where we just begin. So again, with the black. Pressure is quite light. It's easy for me to come back and lighten, but I've got to get some stuff in first. Mm. I'm going to dry this. Okay. <sighs> got to make sure. When you're putting those little layers in there, they're thoroughly dry between them because uh, if you don't, it will pick up the under colors and can muddy the next layer you're putting on. So especially when you're putting highlights, like if you just put down some black paint and you're wanting to put a little highlight over it, it will immediately pick up and make it gray, which you don't want. So if you dry between layers, that's just a, you know, example of what will happen. So make sure you thoroughly dry between layers. Then you don't have any of those problems. And you can have all of the... Oh. Cool layering of colors. Cool layering of colors is always fun. Because that's right. what we do. We, we layer. We do, do that. I'm going to take a little bit of my red over to my yellow. And I'm going to make some oranges, as you do. And then I'm going to get that involved with my brown and a little bit of white. Kind of a different personality than that. Come here. It's real tough. You've got to just sort of have a very light touch. Hmm. You don't want it to be white. It needs to be distinct color, but...
And we're going to be doing the blue over it. Okay. Yeah, that's why we're bothering to get it in now. I like to build my wood up with layers. Doesn't mean that I won't come through with some detailing. It creates a little narrative, but it's important that it that it has personality and character. I can see that. Super big deal. Wow, that really came together. It does. It comes together pretty well. I get into my orange a little more to the yellow when I need to lighten it. I can always get into the burnt sienna, which honestly, like, once you have other colors in there, it's so strange how, how like, brown is not enough. Curving the little grain there a bit. You can. Curving the grain, you can. Painting the still life, you will. There is absolutely do and try <laughs> in art. Huh. So just trying to show some texture and personality in the grain. When I have um, a surface that I'm like, yeah, I really like that. That's working for me. I'm going to come in here to my uh, brown and black, no gray, brown and black, mostly black. And just create the delineation of the wood texture. I'm gonna wiggle up the little wood. And at the end of the wood, we're going to call it a stage because that's a lot to take in. Mm. Shadows in the wood. Ah, that makes those those uh, little, you know, wood. Uh, what do they call those? Rings. Mm-hmm. The little rings of the tree, the cut, the wood grain. Yeah. John's being funny because we used to do woodworking, so he's very aware that it's a wood grain. <laughs> Sometimes he likes to see if I'm like awake. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's just not my show. He's like, I'm just pretending not to know things. Well, some stuff I don't know. I know like some of it. Like I know, I know you use a brush to paint, but I don't know which one. Like, I know it mostly doesn't matter which brush you use because you can paint with anything. But people still like, what brush are you using? I'm starting the shadow that I know is going to be underneath the uh, cutting board. No, they're serious. What brush are you using? I'm using a number four round. <laughs> are we being funny? No. Oh. Uh, yes. But no. What now? I do often use my finger to blend out a shadow. Uh, called rouging. Mm. Is that a number two index? <laughs> it's my most colorful communicator finger. It's my finger of colorful communication that I no longer use because I'm a mum. <laughs> <laughs> I have to pretend I've never used it too. That's the fun of being a mum. I've never used it. Never. Mom, have you ever? Never. Whatever we heated up, I didn't get back to it in time. And I think that's a subtle clue, or perhaps a not so subtle clue, that I should reheat her coffee on the next step, which, you know, I don't mind doing. It's one of those things that hot coffee makes the paint go better. But this is pretty. I was surprised that wood table came in there. It looks all shadowy, and I imagine it'll be nice as the wood, as the uh, blue thing comes in there. All right. Guess what a, we're going to use. What's that? Guess what we're going to use. You, is this a step? This is well. It's once I re let's re sketch in our um, little cutting board thing. And then once we have re sketched in our little cutting board that we painted over, 
Ah, I wasn't sure what that was. The cutting board. You didn't know it was a cutting board? I thought it may have been like a blue towel. <laughs> a very structural blue towel. I don't know. Hi, I'm the most structural blue towel. I, I to be honest, I wasn't looking at the reference picture, so I was just looking at Could have been anything. Could have been. It's just I'm doing the scoop in here. I'm just showing this because, you know, you guys might be having to put yours back. How do you do that? How do you find those lines again? All right, so by demoing me finding the lines, maybe it helps you find the lines. Yeah, cutting board. That makes more sense. And Especially towel? when you put the little hand. I mean, there's a towel there. here. Yeah, so I didn't know if it was just another, like, you know, blue piece of fabric. But that makes much more sense. You know, you just play with it and try to get it general. You don't actually, believe it or not, sometimes it feels like you've got to be perfect in things, but you don't got to be perfect. All right, let's give this a photograph call the step, and we will paint in a cutting board and the shadows on top of it. Maybe the rope. I don't know. I don't really love the rope, so I may not do the rope. Sometimes um, in an image, hmm? sometimes I'll look at something and it just bugs me. If it bugs you in the photograph, it's not going to get better in the painting, <laughs> right? If there's a weird fence that wasn't beautiful in your reference photo, uh, you're going to have to substantially change it or remove it from the painting. Uh, but it's it, it, if it wasn't cute then, it won't be cute now. You know, like when you have a puppy, <laughs> if it's not cute on a puppy, it's not going to be cute on a 140-pound dog, even though they may still be cute because he's still cute and he does smidgy faces. But the, still, they're 140 pounds, they're jumping on you, and they're knocking you down, and that might be a lot. So, yeah, so sometimes when you look at something, if, if you're not saying, wow, I really love what that is, you may not be more fond of it from the painting point of it. And that's something to think of, is do I feel that this is improved uh, by the act of painting, or is it just that it was there and that's their trash can and I don't really need to paint the trash can on my beach scene? You're allowed to remove the trash can from your beach scene. It's completely allowed. That's like literally the definition of your artistic license. Here, I grant you one right now. I'm giving it to you. This is your artistic license. Please take it and use it amply and all you want. It gives you permission to just do what you please on your canvas. And nobody gets a vote unless you want to give them one. But that's entirely up to you, your artistic license. Feel free to drive your art car wherever you want to. They've been giving it an artistic license where they can do what they want. Ding! Blue board. So if you do the full 30 when it's like down low, then it's scalding liquid hot magma coffee. So I have to blow on it a little bit. Let me see how everybody's doing before we move on to the next segment. This is a weird day. In my painting world. It's a day of painting. It's a day of painting. I have a few people who are still hanging in with me. Who knows why? Thank you for being here. It's going to be gorgeous in a minute. Hmm. It's at the underpainting stage. It's at the underpainting stage. With the liquid hot Oh, magma. Tamara is having an arthritic uh, act up, and I am hmm. so sorry. And you know what? What's that? Um, you don't have to type. We will just send love and light and healing vibes your way. It is not fun to deal with arthritis at all. Yeah. Uh, Christine's like, I might, I'm not using the cutting board or I might reshape it. Yeah. If you're not loving it, reshape it. That's totally okay. That's your artistic license. Drive with it. Right. And here's what. Unlike in a car when you make a mistake and you crash and it's very serious. If you make a mistake in art, it, it's awesome. I, I challenge you to see it like this. When you make a whole fire mistake in art, <laughs> when you're like, woo. If you've ever come back from your painting, like, oh. Oh, I don't know what I was thinking. That's the best thing that could happen. Mm. Because now you know something about what doesn't work and, and, and 
you can see things that did work and what doesn't work. And in your next painting, you will be a stronger, better artist. It's a lot like getting in shape without the pain. Because muscles get stronger, but there's hurting along the way. This is no hurting. Interesting. No hurting. I don't think you think it's interesting. I think you want me to finish this <laughs> No, I do. I'm going to continue with my number four, and I'm going to leave you guys alone for a second. Well, uh, not like alone, like I'm going to continue to teach the painting. So we're going to do a little bit of our blue, our phthalo blue and ultramarine blue. We like those as a color, you know, a good bit. And it might have a titch of white in it, right? So it's a sort of off-white. Come here and paint in this forward lip. Down there. And paint in this forward lip. Maybe a little more blue on this inside turn. And what I love is this number four brush is like, I am the shape of the lip, which is really helpful. Add a little more white for the turn coming up the side. So my lip is maybe exiting my canvas, and that is okay. It can do that. It's allowed and back into maybe a little more of the blue where it comes forward in the shade. And then I've got quite a lot back here that's much darker. Right now, I will be coming back with black with shadow. I'm just putting mm -hmm. stuff in right now, just knowing where it is. Where just is it? Getting it squared up. Getting it squared up where it is. Where it is, where it is. There we go. So we've got kind of that wonderful edge. That's lovely. That's terrific. Mm -hmm. I'm going to grab uh, my cat's tongue and my two paints, my phthalo blue and my ultramarine and some white. And a little more white than even that. Paint the top of the cutting board. I'm not going to take out the shadow, and that's why I'm turning here. I want to leave my shadow on there. Leave your shadow under your towel. Now I am going to have a shadow under my tomato and under my jar, but it's okay that I start to craft this wood. Craft your wood. <laughs> craft your wood on your painting. Craft it beautifully. Make sure it's in the right place. Dry brushing here as well a bit. Yeah, this is this is that stage where you're like, what do I have and where does where does it go? There we go. Starting to be a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. A little more phthalo into the blue and phthalo mix. And sometimes a little more white. Even more. And we're going to kind of do a little rough bit here. bit rough so we've got a nice surface but here's the thing there is a lot happening on this wood isn't there there is a kind of uh too much water on that brush there is a bit of an edge and the wood is a little aged as a patina It's okay to talk about these things. I'm on the number four round. I've mixed a little brown in my orange again. And I'm now painting um, some of those little edge details that I have. Mm -hmm.
I'm gonna chip my paint a bit. My paint can chip around the corner too. Yeah. It doesn't have to just chip one place. It can chip a couple places. If I want to chip on the front, I'll get a deeper brown. Right. Where I'm here, I want to definitely be a little, little rougher with it. I need it. I need it to not feel. Uh, super planned. Maybe a little bit of a white Ooh. and a blue mix there, much lighter. I have to put up some more white in a second. This is like anything else that you've been doing today. Now, it's important Just kind of light a little darker there, kind of light. Definitely going to be darker here. It's looking kind of good. Now I can go into a, a hog brush or my little round brush. Since I've had my round brush out, I definitely want to um, kind of take advantage of the roughness of this. Never be afraid of that, right? Mm -hmm. That's nice. And that's sometimes important, too, to be like able to say, well, that was really nice. I liked that. You know, that was really lovely. I liked that. Come around the front with more ultramarine blue. And come around the side here. And again, this is just this blender. I'm just curving that little neck there. Oop, there we go. Got a little white, making rough elements. You've got to make your rough elements. There's rough elements. There's 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 rough characters on this board. I'm gonna get into my white. Put some more out. Do some highlighting, um, some dusting, some stuff to give shape and form, and then also some shadow. So I really like uh, this space here. I want to definitely highlight some space there. So I'm going to get my white and a lot of, of that over to my blue, but I want it to be a light value. It's okay that I'm going to paint into my tomato a bit. Don't feel bad about that. Tomato will come back. Tomato's not sorry or sad. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's this beautiful run of, and I don't know if you can see it from behind the tomato to the corner here on the board, a highlight of light. Might even get a little yellow into my white talking I know and it's easy for it to go a little green but I'm not I'm not too worried about it and then maybe another little kind of light there and so I'll play with that trying to make sure that I have good light shadow Mm-hmm. Because we need it. You could pretty much use any brush in here you wanted. Any brush. Just whatever gives you control where you need it. Whatever gives you control where you need it. Seeing me do is cast a little shadow, right? That's what we're doing. We're finding the light. Finding by the light. 
But you got to be. Mm. All right. Now I'm going to get into my number four round. Pull a little highlight on that wood. That also means that I need some very distinctive little shadows a couple places. So I'm going to take my blue and black and I'm going to come underneath board. That's a round brush, isn't it? That's a number four round. I'm taking a number four round to brown the board. I'm going to glaze. That's where the paint is transparent like we talked about earlier. A little shadow there. I'm definitely going to glaze a little bit of a shadow here and then underneath this part of it. Make sure that there's a bit of a shadow casting down there and under here. Definitely want to cut out. No, I mean, these things do tend to tie, so I don't want to lose that. So I'll start with the shadow, and then I'll add highlights to create the perspective on the hole, because right now it's just a black hole. It's just a black hole right now. It doesn't really help any of us. It's just a, just a hole to hang a board on. With. I'm going to add a little blue right here. I'm going to create a little value in there, right? A little highlight right there. Yeah, that's now it's a hole. Mm -hmm. It's all, it's a hole, it's a hole in the bottom of the board. Shadows while we're here. Because, I mean, we're here, so this is a great time to put them in. So I'm going to take a little of my black and blue. And I know that I've got a little bit coming back here. And a bit of an ellipse of one coming forward. Right. Because you have you you're gonna have a cast shadow. Like already this blop looks more like a significant blop. This blop looks more significant than it did before. And I'm adding I'm now coming under my vase, which will have an even more significant shadow and creating that little light that comes from behind the tomato across that. Right. It again is so dramatic. And one of the reasons why I wanted to show you guys how to paint this here. I can also take this moment and glaze very carefully with my brush across that. So now you see the vase we're kind of casting a shadow yeah. on everything. That's what we're going for. That's what we're going for. Oh my goodness, let's call it a step. Let's paint a vase after this. All right. Do you guys love the beginning of that, though? Starting to see it. Starting to see the direction we're going. You know, and that's the thing. Look, I get it. Still lives can be like, what? Why are we doing it? What's it going on? Hang in with me. I've got you. We will get here because there'll be step-by-steps. There's traceables. We're going to write it out. Yes. It may feel like a lot to take in, but the resources for you to do it are here and they're free. And not some weird extra fee <laughs> that you didn't expect you were going to have to do. If you need the resource, we really try to do it. If you need the resource to complete the lesson, I try not to charge you guys for. Try not to put a financial barrier between it. Right. Try not to put a financial barrier. To, if you want to help me out, you know, we've got Emoji Club, we've got the patronage, and that's really cool. But you don't have to do that to get your base resources. Okay. Now we're going to dry this and we're going to kind of try to redraw in our vase. Okay. So kind of see it again. Just make sure you get a little, little uh, 
dry. Man, that's starting to look like a board sitting on a tabletop with a little glass there next to it. I think it's going to look great. We get the tomatoes and the vase all put in there. It'll look pretty good. What? Well, right. We're going to get it in. We're going to get it in. Let's see. So I'm going to take a T square ruler. And I'm going to come here and say that I need to make sure that the point of my vase is going to be at a similar position to the vase. That will do a lot to make sure that it looks like it was professionally thrown uh, rather than our too artisanal to drink out of. Because <laughs> sometimes our vases can look too artisanal to drink out of. I just want you there to see go. this. I just want you to see this line coming down. So that's why I'm picking a different. So can you see how this line and this line help the vase feel like it's, oh, that's like a real thing that we're doing here. Off here, right? Off yes. here, we're going to bring this line up. And it's going to blend back here because there is a perspective twist on the handle. We kind of lost it a little bit in painting the background, but we definitely want to put it back. Right. And then here we have this coming back. Bring your lip around. And you can see where painting in sometimes these structural lines helps us come back and find our actual space. So in the handle. I'm going to grab some very light color and I'm going to begin by coming up over the top Ooh. with a very light color. Things from here, like once the fruit starts coming in, once the tomatoes, which are fruit, by the way, start coming in, the rest of the piece will oh, 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 fall into place. And you will be like, and if you do this, you will be able to paint so much more stuff when you face the still life challenge. And face it, you shall, my friends. Now, the sh deep shadow is kind of like right there. I'm going to come into my blue mm -hmm. and uh, start to paint in a little bit more of the handle. As you can see, we do. Oh, I don't want to paint out all of my shadow here, so I'll... sometimes you'll see me move it up. Be like, no, 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 you had a little fold of fabric, and we don't want to lose that. As I come up underneath, I'll go into my darker blue and black. And already you can see that we've started to turn the stem. It's really what it is. Coming down this far end, we'll add just a bit of a shadow on the far end. Coming down. And then as we come back up a little later, we're going to add some highlights that will help it really pop away from everything else. The back of the vase, a little bit of a blue kind of shadow. And then right here again, that we'll speak to in a minute. Mm -hmm. I also like to put one right here. I'm going to get playful with it in a second. And then there is quite a lot here. Okay, I'm just taking my number four round. And the other reason the line, is, yes, I'm going to blend this, but the nice thing about the line is it kind of sees when will the shadow end and when will the highlights start to come in. Right. And that's important to know. And now they kind of know the chalk trick. You understand why I'm kind of like tomato, tomato, we'll sketch it in later. <laughs> All right. Our shadow is our black and ultramarine blue. I'm using my round blender here, and we're going to start to paint that in. Cover that in. And the reason I'm using something soft is on ceramics, a lot of times things are, they're not rough like the background, right? So I want to be able to... I'm going to softly pull this stuff in. I'm 
Oh, looking good. Yeah, it kind of comes in real fast. It does. But you've got to start somewhere. You gotta start somewhere. A little bit into the blue, right? Mm hmm. Pull a little bit of a blue streak down there. We're starting to think about what is our pitcher. What is my pitcher? What does it want? <laughs> I do not know. Well, we don't really know what the pitcher wants, but we t we'll find out as we paint it. I'm going to get into my brown a little bit. I kind of soften the shadow in the pitcher now because it doesn't really, it's not really quite this dark. There's a little bit of it that's darker that we can see back here at this far lip. But really, the inside is more of a kind of off-white beige. Still a shadow, for sure. Not quite as much, is it? Now, it's, I'm going to put a little white paint a little closer to me, so I'm not working as much to get to my white on my palette. And I may also just dry this layer real fast. So that as I build up, I get those shocking pops. Yeah. Okay? That really helps when you can get those, those lay, you know, those clean layers on the highlights. That makes a big difference in the, uh, in the poppiness of it. So just make sure you dry between them. I find it interesting that you use blue instead of black or gray to make the shadows. Well, we, we will get a little black in there, but right now, if you can even see it, the blue is, it's nice, right? It you really, really is. See it. It's beautiful. And then we will put in some of our, our Payne's Gray, a deeper mix here in these mm -hmm. shadows. But shadows have several, there's a reflected light in shadows. Things are never just a shadow, just a highlight. There's always more going on. Another reason why you as an artist are benefited by getting into still lifes. I'm going to get some white here. And I'm going to come along the lip. With my number four round. And start to pull in that. You see that right there? When we do this, getting it to look like very reflective ceramics is going to be about getting a nice evaluation of beautiful reflections in here and then hitting a couple of hot pops of white. Brush this back here. Believe it or not, if you look right around here, mm. there's generally a reflection on the inside of that handle. Do you see that handle come to life? Yeah. All right. There we go. There's a bit of a bright, intense highlight inside that handle. See that inside handle? Pay attention to these little moments. They are what makes what you're doing. It's like, I'm going to put this back here. This little bright spot of light coming through, that's a big deal on the bowl. Mm -hmm. You need it. Um, there's little, there's bright, hot reflections happening there. Way before we ever get to the beautiful tomatoes, there's a lot to do. And then you start to realize that maybe the tomatoes are not what the still life is about, but maybe it's about other things for you. And that's always a good kind of wonderful experience. I'm going to come here 
And this, maybe this is a little bit brown and white. I'm going to add a little water to it because I do want it to flow, but now I can just rub with my finger. little brown there, so that orange, and yet so very little white, isn't it? Mm-hmm. If I need to, I will give the crisp edge. Right? And there is a crisp edge that's always needed in this space. And I will come in and give the crisp edge to that outer line of the pitcher. Mm. It does need it. And it's okay that it does. A little bit with my thalo blue and not thalo blue, uh, ultramarine blue and Mars black coming there. You know, I'll get into the black black for sure. Underneath, don't be afraid of it. It's needed where it's needed. Blend it out a bit, but I don't take it into the blue. There's just a bit of that black, black. You see that? Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely want a deep shadow under the picture. Just like we're going to want bright highlights. Right? We will want bright highlights where they're necessary. And I really like a blender on this, especially if you're doing still lifes, especially if you're doing uh, ceramics, because you can see it gives us a much softer diffuse space. And in, in acrylics, right, you know, sometimes what they'll say to us is like, well, you, you know, it's hard to do acrylics like oils. Mm -hmm. It's not really, they just didn't know the tools. <laughs> Very doable. <laughs> and even though, you know, uh, maybe the blends are a little easier to get to sometimes, um, I find that because the dry time on acrylics is so fast, I'm not even into that much extra time over oils. Get into my little brown and black and white. Let's get a little of our red over here. A little bit of that kiss of red. Yeah. Important stuff right there. Don't skip it. A little bit right there. And guess where else there is? Let's see if I can find it up here. You think it would be right there, but it's not. It's where the light is hitting. It's those tomatoes reflecting back into the pitcher. Yeah. That's what's, that's what's the big reflection. Now I'm going to come in here and again, right here. Mm. 
you want to have the highlights. I'll miss my palette, so I do. We do want to have highlights. I can't use my brightest highlights until the blending of the picture is in. Now, Lily was asking, is this considered wet on wet? Um. So sometimes when I'm, when the, if the paint that I'm painting is wet and the paint I'm painting on is wet and it's blending through that method, that's wet on wet. If the paint underneath is dry and the paint I'm going taking over it is dry, it's dry brushing, even if it's a soft diffuse dry brushing because I used a blender brush. Which if you'll notice, the paint underneath is definitely dry. But the diffused blender brush is letting me create a better kind of sense of, you know, ceramic. Now, back along the lip, pure white. Mm -hmm. And that's why you've got to leave room for your brightest whites. Oh, yeah. Because if you don't, then you won't have it. Now, this is a... I get enough paint on there. I'm going to have a little bit right there. A little reflection there. Definitely come under here. right there at that edge. The face will tell you where these go. You don't have to guess. It says. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, reflective surfaces like this are such a blessing because they really tell you where the hot spots are. They really share with you what you have to know. There you go. What do you guys think? You didn't even know it was that cool, did you? This is my favorite one right there. Because mm. when the tomato was on. Oh. I'm coming back there. Okay. All right, let's call this a step. That seems like a good step. Now, this is the point where people start coming back because they're like, oh, wait, it's a painting? I thought it was a crazy woman with a YouTube show. <laughs> that's my favorite if you have been going along going i thought it was a crazy woman with the youtube show i didn't know she was going to get to a painting hit that subscribe button because you don't want to miss me doing this mayhem again do you because you get to do it with me you get to be the one i do have very i do have what do you, what do you mean thank you thank you i you know what i work very hard uh, and this is going to sound crazy to do clickbait the right way. And my clickbait is I'm going to try to come up with a project you really, 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 really want to do. And then I'm going to actually deliver that project. <laughs> That's my goal. So whenever anybody says that, that, that really means a lot to me because I'm always trying to make sure that the unspoken, I was called the unspoken promise to John of a thumbnail. I would say if we have a photo reference, I'm like, where is the unspoken promise of this thumbnail? Right. What are people hoping to paint from it? What painting are they hoping to get out of themselves and out of me in this moment? Because I don't do piano with a painting at the end where it's all about me. I do it all about you. And um, I'm up at night and up in the morning and I look up stuff and I'm always about that. You just totally got me on the soapbox, didn't you? But it does mean the world to me because, hey, I really work at it. Speaking of soap, if you go to our website, there's <laughs> some that you can buy. Yes, I have brush soap, you goo. <laughs> I could use some fresh water, sir. I'm gonna you could. Sharpen my chalk, and I'm going to... Ooh, I really sharpened it. I'm going to dry my painting a little you bit. You can't leave if you're going to dry your painting. I know. That's All right. Go ahead. You just do your thing. So. <sighs> It's a, uh, so she's got her, she's just drying that off. All right, I didn't take a look at that. Mm -hmm. All right, you all done? Yeah, I think so.
So what did the pencil sharpener say to the new pencil? What did the pencil sharpener say to the new pencil? You're pointless. <sighs> you are my favorite human. Do you know that's really on? That's how basically how he asked me out. It's terrible humor. Just made me so happy. I'm going to think about my tomato. The wonderful thing about your tomato, huh? Clean water. I'm going to sort of sketch this in. You're going to make sure that you've got a nice little. Your tomatoes don't have to be perfectly round. And the only thing I could have done to make this a better still life is use heirloom tomatoes, which would have been an even longer lesson. But I think if you ever want to put a still life together, and you're thinking, what kind of vegetables or fruits should I use? Use the weird ones. Mm -hmm. Use the weirdest ones. That's what you want. Now I've got a little tomato kind of back here. He's going to be sitting over there thinking about his world. Of course, we've got this little fellow right here. Doing little tomato things. So that's a nice little, that's a nice little grip of tomatoes, right? I think so. I'm going to just use my little dome blender again because I'm into it today. Let's take a little bit of, just want to start getting some tomato colors on here. A little bit of red and yellow. Come around, around here. As I go back, I'll get a little more into my cad red. Cad is like the best tomato color because it's so warm. If you don't have this or you can't afford cadmium, you can get hue. If you can, you can get pyrrole red or naphthol red medium. Um, what you want to know is which one is your warm red. Brush stroke, I think, is a big deal on um, topics like this. I'm going to use my purple for shading. And I use purple for shading red things because while black does work and it does shade it and you get great tonality, I find that purple retains a wonderful depth of color. I don't want to be mistaken for one of the crazy, crazy people who say you should never use black in painting. Hmm. <laughs> Did I never use it? Did it hurt you once? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? I was what I just need to ask a follow-up question too. I'm like, what happened? Did it jump up and what bite you? What did that tube of paint do to you? It did something. Now I'm going to get into my number four round on occasion, and that's to give my tomato a nice sharp edge. See this edge here? I need, I see you, Twix. I know it's been a long lesson. I love you. We'll be done soon, and we do treaties. There's still some anchovies left. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Talk about lovely leftovers. Lovely leftovers. She knows it's there too. It's She's the like, could you finish this? I can smell it on the counter. And I know when it's over, I get a treaty. So I'm just using my number four, you can see, to make sure that I have a nice edge. Right now I have an apple. <laughs> it's, it's a problem, I know. I'm going to be putting a stem here, and the shadow that the stem will be coming out of, I like to do as purple. Isn't that fun? Back to the dome. Number 12, Princeton Round Blender. Everybody at Princeton should send me a thank you card. But honestly, guys, I'm sharing this with you. They don't pay me anything. They don't even know me. They're not even my friends. It's just a really good dome blender. And not too expensive. But you know what? You guys have been saying, can I do a makeup blender? A lot of you say yes. Mm. I have not tested all the makeup blenders, but I'm going to provisionally say yes, just based on how enthusiastically you guys have enjoyed it. So This is a slightly uh, oranger, more to the yellow orange. Because again, tomatoes are, you know, they're orange. And I'm going to pull it out, if you'll notice like this kind of allows for some artisanal, some artisanal. Mm. Blending, because it kind of makes the streakies. I'm actually, 
kind of a tomato master. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Weird for it to be good at, but I kind of blow peaches, but I'm, I've got to do a peach redemption video soon. <laughs> I like the tomatoes. But I really get the tomato. I like to eat some. I like to paint them. They're so wonderful to me. You are so beautiful to me. And to me. dusty so i just dust and glaze dust and glaze so mm. what's underneath isn't wet the layers that i'm <laughs> look at that tomato <laughs> so, let's look at this fruit it's the fruit it's the fruit i love the best but i do really love it they're kind of fantastically imperfect little creatures and they're so tasty with their ooey-gooey seeds. And, oh, when you paint a still life, like the other thing I could have done besides doing uh, heirlooms on the still life to make it even better is slice one open and let the seeds kind of goo out. That would have been great. We would have been here for six oh. hours, but that would have been okay. great. I see. You're hiding. What am I doing? You. I'm hiding the orange mixes. Yep. That's his job. I taught him. He Are you putting me in front of the tomato to be mean to them? Why don't you just move you. the picture in picture for a second? Put you or me way up. Look, I'm not important. Push push me to the side. Push you over there. Push me yeah. over there. I don't there matter anyway. There we go. And I bring a slightly a brighter run of uh, kind of yellow over here. You'll notice I'm building it up slowly. I'm, I'm taking my time. Take your time. Your tomato deserves your respect. Okay. Back to Harry and Megan. Who thinks that we need a chicken coop cam? Huh? Well, they had kept visiting the chicken coop, and she does uh, rescue chickens now. These rescue chickens, I think, live in like a $14 million house. But the chickens who've significantly improved their lot in life. I want to see how the chickens are doing. I want a chicken coop camp. Hmm. Like we could donate to the chickens since they're no longer on the royal payroll. Right? I don't know how that works. It's not, I don't, I don't know, know how either. it works. And we I'm could donate our... to the chickens and we could patron the chickens. I would patron Harry and Megan's chickens. I know nothing of royal chickens. You don't know anything. He's just trying to keep chickens out of our own house. I'm going to get a little more into the cats. So a couple places you do want to really get some cat in here. See how we're doing for the glow? Because mm -hmm. I do it for the glow. I mean, if Oprah, if you're painting with me, you should advise her to like, like really like upgrade the chicken coop, make it like a luxury <laughs> chicken coop. <laughs> Palatial even like palace chickens. Right. And then we could like maybe there could be like an automatic feedy button, like you put in money and you can feed the chickens. Kind of like um This sounds like Hunger Games, but without the pain and horribleness. This sounds like too many chicken plans. I just thought about okay, so did I stay up till like two in the morning thinking about these people? I don't know. And and who I you know, would have nothing in common, chickens. Look at that. Very beautifully thought about tomato. Yeah, that's how that's how a tomato do. Now underneath my tomato, I'm gonna take a little bit of blue. I don't want any any uh, white in it. I'm gonna come underneath on the toe of my number four round, and we're going to talk a little bit. Mm. About a deeper shadow. This is the darker truth of the tomato that you don't know. I'm going to use my finger because I don't want a hard edge. Shadows very rarely have a super hard edge. Look at that. It's a well shaded tomato. 
You're like, she breaks a lot about her tomatoes. It's sort of unusual for Now, I'm also going to... I like that tomato. In a minute, that will be a super important bunch of uh, little weird purple lines. This is just purple and a little bit of red. It'll matter. Now I'm going to take my green and I'm going to get my brown. I'm going to mix them together. And it's still not dark enough. I'm going to come get a little black in it over here in the corner. I guess you could do phthalo blue as well. And we're going to say some very important stem things. Mm. I'm going to take that green and I'm going to go up about a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to curve back. I will highlight a minute, but not yet. It's not ready yet. The stem is like awesome, so I'm just actually being attentive to it. Huh. The trick is that first line of stem has to be a little, it has to be a little weird. Come forward here. Stem, you know I know. have to make that shadow it's on the vine <laughs> why do i do such an evil laugh when i paint well it's like <laughs> <laughs> because you like to paint good i do it does feel like I'm getting away with something when a painting really comes out well. There is a bit of a, ha, 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 no one can stop me now. Mm -hmm. Don't stop me now. I'm having a good time. Having a good time. I have never sung well enough to get content ID. <laughs> like ever. That's okay. <laughs> like ever. <laughs> I don't mind. It's okay. This is a painting song. Yeah. I mean, a painting show. And the other fun thing about all of this is these little weird wackadoo little leaves. Look at these go. Who wouldn't want these? These are so fun. They bend around. They do, they do such strange things. Such strange things, say the leaves. Mm -hmm. So that little stem is happening there, and it's feeling super happy. We've got this nice little green and brown as it goes and it goes. I'm going to get a little bit of my cad yellow over here, I think. Because we need some tiny, it's still off green, but it's a little more on than the one with the black. Mm -hmm. And we're going to come along the top. Catching value is a big deal. You're going to find the little places that the highlights are. Sort of like where the wild things are. Yeah. Yeah. Except for paint. Except for painting. You're going to find where the highlights are. Oh, that wasn't, yeah, that wasn't. I was like, oh, no, that's not the highlight. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, you are. You are the highlight. Like that. Mm -hmm. You know you do. I gotta be careful how I talk or I'm gonna end up being kicked over to OnlyFans. <laughs> you like it? Do you like it? <sighs> Sorry. That was an off color joke. <laughs> I think it's okay. What they used to call it in comedy when you said like crazy things? Mm. I'm crazy trying to remember things from you say? I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to remember from the marvelous Mrs. Maisel because they try to educate us about comedy history. <laughs> oh. Learning. I'm learning. I'm just, you know what? I'm learning more about my day every day, guys. The steady cam operators in that show are 
awesome. Yeah, they are. Like, John's, like, actually fanned out enough to reach out to them in their own groups. Like, you are so good. Well, it's... Wait, it, I know it's work-related. I'm not saying it's not. It's just, yeah. I'm adding white to my yellow and green to pop some very bright highlights, if you'll notice. Not every part of the leaf needs it, but some parts do. Hmm. And when it does, do you want to leave that leaf alone, unattended, unhelped, unaided in a world of cruelty? No. You want that leaf to know its value. Wow. That's really just... I'm going to bring a little green back here. So what I'm doing is making sure that these little stems and things have shading, as they should have, because I'm kind of good at what we... Tomatoes! My <laughs> secret skill! You never even knew. You watch my show all the time. You're like, I had no idea. She had so many, so many tomato moments. Potato feels. So please do not kick the bees of the internet. <laughs> the one thing I could have painted right now to explode all of the internet is a potato. <laughs> and I don't want to because it's not, it's not, it's, I just don't care. <laughs> that is not, <laughs> the potato hill is not the hill I choose to die on. <laughs> so I'm adding a little bit of uh, purple. This is for a shadow that will in a minute be a very wet highlight will feel almost like um like a water drop mm. in a second Highlights there. Mm hmm Actually, I'm going to do a blue and white highlight. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Wow. You just keep adding more and more to it. I do. I do. I like it. I like it. Sometimes I like it. Sometimes I don't. Add a little kind of orange here. A little orange the end of this little moment over here couple little spots there. You can always come back with your dark colors and exaggerate anything that you need to. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's call it step, and I'm going to paint the back tomatoes because that was wow. a lot of tomato like to take in. <laughs> that was a lot of tomato for you guys to take in. Like that's a step. It is a step. It is a step. And then we'll finish these back tomatoes, and then you will have a still life that you're going to put on your wall and go, I cannot. I used to do five days for these. Do you guys remember it was like five days to do still life, and now we're like, boom, sitting. Well, sitting for me. It's okay if you take five days. I'm not going to be like telling on you or mad at you or something. It's all good. How are we doing? Are we kind of impressed? Do we love it? Do we love it? Do we love it? Ooh, maybe less we love it. Do we love it? Oh, it looks good, right? It just takes a second to do the work. You know, and there's, you can paint loose and there's nothing wrong with that at all. 
you can paint in a more tight considered style like this and there's nothing wrong with that at all i like to show you guys both so you guys can figure out a way to get in and out of a painting okay so wonderful tomato is it not it really is a wonderful tomato let's continue painting our hot tomato same tomato different tomato this this the these other these. tomatoes these other tomatoes i thought we would be on to the other tomatoes did you hope well, I thought we would. I it's just, been a I, long night. Were you hoping? <laughs> I'm not really hoping. I'm, you know. and come here. This is, again, my number 12 blender. When I want to make a tight edge with this, I simply kind of do this wiggle bit and no, notice that I can get a very tight edge. Mm -hmm. But I probably will still bring my... Um, number four round into the mix just because it will give me this right here this edge right here so this a little more red up here now i know i'm gonna There. And then let's go ahead and also give ourselves a slightly more considered edge here. As you do. And then we'll get back in with our soft brush for that tomato we feel that we love so much. Tomatoes are the funnest to paint. Do you love them? I do. I'm mixing my purple and my cad red for you. Purple and your cad red. Hmm. If you made it to here, you've learned purple and cad red. Superpower! <laughs> so, now, in this tomato right here, we kind of see that it's got the stem up top, so maybe I'll put a little bit darker purple there. And we know that it's going to be here, kind of coming off. You know, right? Look at that go. Look at it go. I'm going to bring a little bit of my cad red over my yellow. If any purple's on there, it'll gray out, which is perfect when you're trying to paint a very bright tomato in the shade. Well, in the shadow, it's not really a shade as much as a shadow. And you can keep blending it forward, but not lose the muted tone. That you're super dependent on in this state. Now, coming over here, you know, this tomato might be a little bit brighter because it could be getting to some of the light, right? Mm-hmm. We don't know. We don't want to judge this tomato. Oh, too much yellow. Has that ever happened Whoa. to you? It's no, it looks okay. There you go. I just dusted it in. Look at that. If it was a color oh. that I was already kind of thinking I was going to get into a space, I won't worry about it too much. I will just dust it in. And then where I need my purple, I can get into it to do my shading. Pushing that back up. There's quite a lot of shading between these two tomatoes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a little bit of this purple and again, kind of accentuate that shadow. I can always blend and, you know, kind of push it away, but it's nice to, at this stage, think about the fact that it is there and it is happening. I'm going to rinse out and wipe off my brush and I'm going to come back and do some brighter oranges and yellows.
The diffuseness of this brush really helps me get through. Mm. Get into my red. How you guys doing? I'm watching you blend, and it's looking pretty good. It does look good. I'm going to get uh, my number four round. I'm going to get kind of a lighter yellow, and I'll come along here. I just want to make sure that we've got some of that. So there's this sort of uh, implied little roll on this tomato. I don't want to lose it. Highlight. And if you do diffuse the edge of your pot, don't worry, you can come back. Don't be stressed about that. You've got, especially if you've got fluid paint or white paint left, you can always come back. And we've got highlights to hit on the tomatoes at the end. So you're pretty good about being able to get back in there and fix it up. Brushing down with a little bit of a interesting highlight here. The other thing you can do with this brush is kind of stipple out and then therefore create a little bit of unexpected shading in relationship to that. Isn't that lovely? I'm using a little more cad right here. They really start to look like little red tomatoes. Mm hmm. Not quite little red Corvettes, but it's something. You can see really quick how just a little bit of shading. Mm hmm does so much. A little bit of cat red there. A little bit right there. You can see I'm just dusting a little bit of cat red there. Just a little cad red. Hmm. Places that you need it. It's just a very distinctive color. Everybody paint an apple, but only we paint a tomato. Look at this go. Just soften mm -hmm. it up. Now, if I get it too yellow, right, which I have a little bit, you just use the brush to soften it out. This kind of highlight comes from off here, and you can dra drag it sort of sh directionally around. Mm -hmm. What is also wonderful about the top of this tomato here is we've got this great stem. So once you like, you're like, man, I know what I'm doing. When I want to blend with my brush, you can see I kind of just do that. But it still leaves that nice little shadow in the middle there. Yeah. It's a nice thing to do. Your tomato will never be mad at you for doing it. A little bit of highlights on our tomatoes. 
Too much of highlight. Too much? We don't mind. Because we can always soften it. Come underneath our, our tomatoes. Very serious. Serious shadow. Can't wait. Yeah, that's a very serious shadow. Mm -hmm. Blend it with my finger because it's diffused. It is diffused, though. Not confused, it is diffused. Very striking thing to do right there, and I did it. Now, let's let this be a whole thing, and then we'll do the stems and the highlights. Yeah. Okay, let's dry it. Stems and then highlights. Okay. All right. All right. Dry it. And then stems and then highlights. That is what she said. I'm sure I'm going to take a picture in this next step, though. That's okay. Okay. Ten. Not too bad. Long class, but not too bad for steps. <laughs> it's a long class, but not too bad for steps. But hopefully you guys are starting to see how something gorgeous like this even gets built, right? Because that's the big thing. How do you build it? How do you make this happen? If you don't see the steps, you can't get there, but you really can do this. There we go. Oh, my goodness, I see Yamini and Ashley Welch and Karen. You guys are hanging in, and Jane's like, this is wow. I'm so glad you guys like this. This is just a really beautiful piece. And again, still life. Still life, still life, still life. It is such a good exercise in understanding how paintings work. So artists like to do them because they sell really well, but also because they really, really help us understand the process of painting. I'm going to take my burnt sienna into my phthalo green and I'm going to add a little Mars black to make it as dark as possible. Make a little stem kind of coming up. I just think it's just interesting to Be weird about it. The stems like this are weird. Mm -hmm. They just are. And they make strange journeys. Everywhere they go. Because this is sort of green on green, it is important to get this initial value set worked out. Right. I love this. We're gonna give ourselves some weird kind of kind of leaves going off that way. Leaf coming up there. You want that dark green? Mm -hmm. All right, because we need that dark contrast. But um, beyond that, I'm going to say in this one instance, because it's against such a dark background, go ahead and touch some of it with just. A little black line because you're gonna need it to see it you're gonna need it to see it hmm. and I'm going to take my yellow and it's just into my burnt sienna and thalo green right so it's not the black it's just sort of that off green yellow and then we're going to come here and
It is in the shadow for sure. But you've still got to have those same contrasted moments. No, because of the location uh, and the fact that it's similar color sets, it may not show as much, but it doesn't have to be complete camouflage. As you see with what we're doing here, mm -hmm. does not have to be complete camouflage. See how we do under the white? Very, yeah. I have to be everywhere. Just enough so that we see little pops of light that are happening. Even here in the back. Look at that go. Now, mm. much like before, going to get a little bit. A little bit. Of my, I'm gonna take my purple. Because you just added your little accents on them. Yeah, I f I like to do this to exaggerate the um. Maybe just a little bit here, and I'll just flush that out. Exaggerate some of the shot, the highlights, the water. Because mm -hmm. what happens is the water kind of collects, the condensation collects, plus there's a uh reflection. Can't, however, get that uh, effect unless you're willing to get the shadow into it. Get a little of the shadow self under the stem here. Getting into my purple for that. A little story of the stem coming off there. Pretty nice, pretty okay, pretty good. Yeah. Did a little bit of our white and our ultramarine blue, kind of an off white at first. I am kind of wiping off extra pigment, so there's a, just a dusting of pigment. And that's so that some of what is there can uh, show through. And then I want to. I'm going to get a little bit of my yellow and my white, but it's a little bit of an off white. To make sure that there's sort of that there, just in the background, right? A little bit of shading, kind of a big deal, but here's where it gets real. Come into our white, tip of our brush. See those lips there? See that drama there? A little bit right there. And a little bit right there. Guys, guess what we just did? Let's you look painted, at it from a distance. You painted a still life? We painted a still life of wackadoo Ooh, tomato. Look at, look at those. Beautiful, lots of different textures and materials. We had folded fabrics, we had pictures, we had bowls, it had sculptural elements in them, we had strange shadows, which is great, this great background texture. And of course, the tomatoes themselves, 
which were a lot of fun to paint. I got to find a detail brush so I can sign that I might have washed all my detail brushes. <laughs> might actually have washed all. Oh, there, there. Here's one I can get away with. <laughs> so how do we think? I what? think it looks great. Are you happy with that? I'm going to make a kind of color that will... I like my colors. It, it is important that uh, things show, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't want um, a signature that detracts from the whole piece because you worked pretty hard to get here, guys. And so you don't want to destroy the whole piece by picking something that is so disjointed from the composition that it just makes your eye look only at the signature. And I know I say that at every painting, and I've said it for 1,500 paintings, but if I've saved 1,500 artists <laughs> from doing that, because I, I know a lot of actual collectors, and they will not buy paintings, sometimes because of the signature. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm And that is why I beat that drum. I, I don't always talk about it because I don't want you guys to panic out there, but, you know, when you get into that kind of level where people collect multiple pieces, um, you know, it can it can be one of those things that affects the sales. So just be thoughtful. It doesn't have to be perfect. I don't have the most perfect signature in the world, but I do have a signature that does not pull the eyes so much that you couldn't get the piece. What do you guys think? Did we promise I, on the thumbnail? Did beautiful. we deliver on the promise of the thumbnail? Yeah, I think so. I think so, too. I think it turned out really great. We painted tomatoes. So, like, if somebody said it couldn't be done, ha ha, it has been done. You have and, done it. And you guys have done it. So, this, if you haven't done all my still lifes, this would go very beautifully with the uh, classic still life on the 16 by 20 that has grapes and uh, I don't remember the weird flowers that were in it and wine. Mm -hmm. I've got one coming up with pears and dried uh, hydrangeas that are going to come up in a little bit. So you could literally have uh, three really rather wonderful still lives, I think, to enjoy. Realistic ones, like this type of traditional classic still life. Though I think this is modern a little bit because of its subject matter. Yeah. Pitcher and tomatoes, kind of like. It's kind of like how you show out and you go, yeah, I can, I can do that. Right? And yeah. people will love it, especially because of this stuff. I think it looks great. Oh, we'll see everybody. I just I gotta go to the chat to see what everybody's saying because I'm I'm behind yeah, I think this and is awesome and how much how beautiful this is and they really want to thank you for doing this and it just turned out really good. So if you love this and you want to see more still lives, be sure and thumb up this video and leave a comment and let me know because I tend to paint what you guys ask for. So if you want it, a bunch of you have to ask for it. It's totally okay to get together in groups and make a plan. I don't mind. We're like, everyone, let's ask her for this. But if you're interested in something and you want to see more, you've got to let me know. Acrylic April is coming up April 1st. If you want to paint better in 30 days, I hope you will join me for that journey. It's a daily painting every day for 30, which is what I'm going through right now, except several times a day. <laughs> <sighs> Be good to yourselves. Really seriously, be good to yourselves. This is your life, your life, your one life. Maybe you incarnate, but very few of you can remember that, so it might as well, for obstinate purposes, be one life. I don't know the answers to the big, giant, universal questions, but I do know right now this is your moment. All right? So your present, it's everything. So take care of it and treat yourself like you love yourself. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Goodbye.